Hello, uh, today I'm going to do a demonstration of how to play Empire of the Sun using the CDG solo system. I think this will be useful. I, I looked around and I couldn't find one for myself. There's examples of the CDG solo system for other games, but not for Empire of the Sun. And it takes, if you go into it not knowing what to expect, it takes a little slight shift in your cognitive load or... Um, but it's really not that hard, and once I show it, I think it'll be pretty straightforward. Uh, so what what this is is uh, yeah, the CDG Solo system is published by GMT. I have it here. Uh, it comes with six uh, with specific instructions for six games. Uh, Empire of the Sun is actually not one of them, at least at the time I'm filming this. I think they're working on a new edition, which will include Empire of the Sun. And so to get the Empire of the Sun rules for the CGG Solo System, you can go to the GMT website, go to the Empire of the Sun page, and you can download this. And it's just a two-page document on how you play things. Uh, the All that's really included, or all that's included with the uh, CDG Solo System, are these two card or player mats. So there's a blue one, and there's a green one. And there are also two counters that come with each one, um, the cards remaining, and a max hand size. Uh, for the Empire of the Sun game, we actually don't even use the max hand size. We'll just be using the cards remaining. Oh, and the other thing that it comes with is a die. It's a custom die that has its own special value, CDE, C, less than, double exclamation point, so forth. Uh, and if you don't want to pay, I think this costs twenty dollars. If you want to, if you don't want to pay for it, um, they do have a print and play instruction, so you can print it out. I'm not sure how the die works. You could probably just translate uh, one through six numbers to those different symbols. But yeah, so this is it here, and I think it's just easiest to go ahead and set it up, and then we'll start playing. So over here, I have the Japanese deck. I do have one card set aside, and that's for the instruction. So um, if we go to the South Pacific scenario instructions, uh, you'll see that we'll be, we need to place the Japanese counterattack at Savo Island face up on the draw pile. So, but at this point, we're destroying the standard setup. Um, this is standard for when there are two player decks. Some games have one player deck, this one has two. So first we'll set up the Japanese. And what we do is we take the first card, we put it in slot A face up. We take the second card, put it in slot B face up. Then we put cards in slots D and E, and we put those face up. Uh, finally, per the scenario instructions, we place the Japanese counterattack at Savo Island on slot C. The Japanese were dealt three cards, or they're dealt three cards, so we put the cards remaining at three. And that's pretty much it for the setup. Uh, one thing, and this was the part that I wouldn't say struggled, but I didn't quite get it first because I was new to it. You might be tempted to say, because these were the first two cards I drew, and then this one's part of the instructions, that the Japanese player's hand is these three cards. And it's not. Uh, the Japanese player's card is dynamic, and it's so it's a it's a little different than if you were playing this two-player or not using the system. Um, it is, however, at least for the upcoming reaction turn, it is the Japanese hand for playing reaction, and we'll get into that in a little bit if that if that makes sense. But yeah, it's um, you just need to think of this as five potential cards that you might be playing, some of which are known and some of which are unknown. Uh, when it's the active player's turn. Um, let's move over to the allies, and I forgot to say I'd shuffled these cards, but so we put the ally deck in C. Same thing, we put one, the first one in A, the second one in B face up, then we put the third one in D, and the fourth one in E. And then up here, per the scenario instructions, uh, we have the Operation Watchtower card as a future offensive. So the future offensive cards are just set aside like they are in the normal game. And I think at this point we're ready to get started. Now normally uh, the player that's going to go rolls a die, 
and we would go through that. But because the allies have the future offensive card, just like in the game, as it says here, a future offensive card can be played for reaction uh, or as an EC offensive to win initiative. And so the typical flow of this game is that the allies are going to start off playing the Operation Watchtower. So I'm going to bring that in and I'm going to play that and I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, so the allies have done their activation and movement and declared their battle hexes. So they've got uh, four naval units, uh, five naval units, uh, four naval units, and the Marines attacking Guadalcanal, doing an amphibious assault, and then the Northampton doing a screening operation here in Rabul. Um, but I'm not going to focus too much on that. The point now is that it's the Japanese reaction. It's, it's time for the Japanese to do their reaction. And the rule is in this is that the Japanese can play any face-up reaction card. And as you can see here, they have two. The Japanese at counterattack at Savo Island and the Battle of Kolombangara. And I think what the, uh, the Japanese are going to do is the historical thing. They're going to do the counterattack here. Uh, before I do that, note that uh, this thing says draw one strategy card. So we'll play that. And normally when you take a card from the deck and play it, you reduce the cards remaining from down by one, of course. Uh, but because this is being filled by another card, even though we can't see it, we just leave the cards remaining at three. And by the way, I realized when I set up the allies, I forgot to put the cards remaining. Um, so per the scenario instructions, the allies are dealt two cards, the Japanese are dealt three, and so we start with the allies at two. And that number does not include the future offensive card, so when I played the future offensive card, that did not uh, put a dent in the cards remaining. Okay, so now I'm going to do the Japanese reaction, the battles, and the post-battle movement, and then we'll come back to the Japanese player turn. Okay, so we conducted the battles and the post-battle movement. Um, FYI, at Rabul, the Northampton was eliminated. There were no damages inflicted on the Japanese. And over here, the attack was successful on Guadalcanal. And then for post-battle movement, the Japanese put some units in Bougainville, and the Allies brought in some units to Guadalcanal and spread out the carriers. But the important thing what we're showing here is now it's the Japanese player turn. And so what do they do? Well, they roll a die because they have no futures offensive cards. And let's go ahead and roll it. And it's A, B, C is the result. And if we look at our player sheet, we can see the instructions are, if not already face up, flip all face down cards inside slots A, B, and C. So we'll flip that, and now these are the three cards, and then we can play card A, B, or C for any allowable purpose or a future offensive card. And yeah, so let me just see, I think, well, this doesn't matter too much, so I'm going to play this card. The Rear Admiral Watami Ugaki card. Uh, I forgot to discard these. And because I played a card, we put the cards, or I'm about to play the card, we bring the cards remaining down to two. And we put this card in slot B. Uh, we just slide it over from slot C, whether it's face up or face down. Uh, and so now. Yeah, the Japanese have two cards left, and they have one reaction card. So now I'm going to play this Rear Admiral Matami Ugaki card, and I'll be back shortly. Okay, so the Japanese are going all out for an attack on Port Moresby. Again, not sure if this makes sense, but uh, yeah, they activated every unit they possibly could, and it's attacking Port Moresby. 
So for the allied reaction, you can see there are two cards face up and neither of them is a reaction card, so they cannot play a reaction card. Uh, that's pretty straightforward. And what they would do at this point is roll for intelligence. It's a three, subtract two, so they can uh, react to this. And I'm going to do that and we'll be back in a little bit. All right, the Battle of Port Moresby is over. The Allies managed to hold on. They lost the uh, air naval combat, and including uh, taking step losses with all their air units and the WASP uh, CV being destroyed. But in the ground combat, both sides rolled really low and neither was able to inflict any damage. And so the uh, Japanese unit had to retreat. In any case, we're now moving on to the Allied turn, and what we do, of course, is we roll the die to see what, what's up, and we get an AB. And if we look at AB over here, uh, what it is is that flip any face down cards in A and B and play A or B for any allowable purpose. So here are the two cards. Um, sorry for the glare there, we have the PT Boats card and the Operation Dexterity. I think I'm going to go ahead and just play the PT Boats card, even though the Japanese are already at no barges. But if I do that, I can get another strategy card. So I just play that. Um, and nothing really happens because, like I just said, the, the barges is already... Um, it's already no barges, so there's no additional effect. But the... Allies get to pull another card, or they put that card in slot A regardless, but the key point is that the cards remaining stays at 2. And that's it for the Allied portion. Now we'll go over to the Japanese, and they have two cards left. And let's do a die roll for them. And they also get an AB, so the Japanese can pick one of these two cards to play. Okay, so the Japanese decide they're going to play the Operation Igo. They're going to play that as an OC. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and execute that, and we'll be back in a second. Okay, so we resolve that. Uh, again, the Japanese tried to get to Port Moresby, and again, they had a favorable air naval result, but they still... Neither side hurt anybody in the... Uh, in the ground combat, and so the Japanese had to retreat again. Uh, so we can discard this card. And when I played that, I forgot to slide a new card over here and move the cards remaining down to one. So, yeah, the Japanese have one card left. The Allies have two, and it's the Allied turn. And we'll do a roll, so they get a DE. That's a new one. So flip any face-up cards in slots D and E, play D or E for any allowable purpose. So let's flip these. And we got two military cards, one a three point and one a two point. Um, I think the allies are going to do this one. So I'll put in a new card to fill it in. And that moves the cards remaining down to one for the allies. And I'm going to resolve this and be back for them. Okay, so I resolved that. The, uh, the, ja the uh, allies did a OC offensive against this Japanese air unit here. And it was a bit of a disaster. The Allies ended up losing two steps, and the Japanese lost nothing. But at any rate, we'll move on. And now it's the Japanese player turn. They have one card remaining. Um, and, yeah, we still roll for it. Um, that one card that's visible is not their hand. I think I've been saying this, so. But let's go ahead and do a roll. And they get the E less than sign. So if there is only one no face card up, uh, flip any <coughs> face down card until there are two. So we'll flip this one. 
That's the combined fleet battle of Santa Cruz. And then play card C or the lowest. Oops, looking at the wrong one. Place any face up event card or play the lowest valued face up ops card for any allowable purpose. Um, so I'm going to play this one as an ops and the move I'm going to do actually is to take the combined fleet um, and we're going to move it to the next turn uh, where we're going to do a, a redeployment of that. And yeah, we'll move this card here and so cards remaining is zero for the Japanese, so they have no cards left, obviously. And now it's the Allied turn. And they roll the C less than double exclamation point. And so if not already face up, flip the top card of the deck on site C on slot C. So we flip that. And place card C or the lowest valued faced ops card. Um, I think I am going to play this event. So this is the uh, end of the U.S. Army Navy dispute. So that puts cards remaining down to zero. And we flip the ISR to strategic agreement. And that's the end of the turn. And I think the last thing I'm going to show you is how the beginning of the turn works. Uh, and it's really pretty straightforward. All you have to do is set the cards remaining. I'm going to skip over the attrition and other end of phase things because again I'm focusing on learning, uh, focusing on teaching how to work the solo system. And yeah, so one thing the allies would do uh, when they get to it is they roll for the strategic uh, submarine warfare. So that's going to be a three minus four plus one is zero so that means that the Japanese are only going to get three cards so they set their card, uh, cards remaining to three and meanwhile the allies set their cards remaining to four and then you proceed as normal. Um, and so I think I've shown almost everything I want to show. Um, the only thing we didn't uh, get into are the mandatory cards, and I don't think the mandatory, I've never actually played with those, I don't think the mandatory cards exist in the South Pacific scenario. And then there's some exceptions here, um, which I don't think we ran into either. Actually, the card we just played, so uh, what does that say? Any face-up card in the card display can be swapped with a card in the discard pile as the card stipulates. Um, so it looks like I skimmed over this part, the bonus. I just looked at the ISR part. So in theory, I could have taken a card from the discard pile um, and put it. Let's see, where would we have put it? Uh, if there are no face-up cards... I guess it would have gone to where we were before, so we would have put it on slot C, where we started from. Yeah, so I think that's it. I think this is a, it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple system. I think it introduces the uh, right amount of knowledge and lack of knowledge and limits your decision space, so you don't have to choose between, you know, amongst the hand of seven. Uh, the die is going to limit you to... We're going to hit every single one of these. I think sometimes you have a choice between three cards, but you know, you're going to be choosing between two and three cards typically. And yeah, I think it makes it a really good experience. So thanks for watching.